Mars in weeks, not months. Saturn within our grasp. The once unthinkable is on the horizon, and the secret? It's powered by the same force that lights up the stars. Prepare to be astounded as we unravel the game changers in interstellar travel. Right now, SpaceX is shaking things up with the testing of a new mighty super heavy booster. But wait, it's not just about commercial space companies. NASA too. Our beloved pioneer of space exploration is looking ahead. They're setting their sights on an incredible incredible mission, sending humans to Mars. But what if we told you this is just the beginning? What if there's a way to go beyond Mars, beyond the asteroid belt, and even beyond Jupiter's massive gravitational pull? Our friends across the pond at UK-based Pulsar Fusion are saying, why not? They're attempting to harness the mighty power of nuclear fusion to propel us deeper into space, opening doors to destinations once thought unreachable. If they succeed, this could mark a paradigm shift in space travel. Instead of splitting atoms, as in nuclear fission, they're talking about smashing them together in a nuclear fusion-powered rocket engine. The heat generated could provide thrust and electrical power for spaceships. And guess what? It's cleaner and more efficient. If you're thinking that nuclear and clean are two words that don't usually go hand in hand, I don't blame you. But Pulsar Fusion is on a mission to change that perception. Their goal is to create an efficient, high-speed propulsion system that's as clean as possible. To achieve this, they're harnessing the incredible power of nuclear fusion the very process that powers our sun. Let's dive deeper into the core of fusion propulsion, the science that's fueling the fire in Pulsar Fusion's engines. It's like alchemy, but real. Fusion is all about smashing atoms together, turning them into new atoms, and in the process, generating an absurd amount of heat. It's like a celestial boxing match happening right inside your rocket engine, where atoms come head to head, and when they clash, bam, you've got energy. But we aren't talking just any energy, we're talking energy on a nuclear level. But hold on, when we say nuclear, don't let your mind wander off to those big scary mushroom clouds. Fusion isn't about breaking things apart, it's about bringing them together. You see, there's a vast difference between fusion and its more infamous cousin, fission. Fission is like a bad breakup. It's all about splitting heavy atoms apart. And like any breakup, it can get messy, creating radioactive waste. Fusion, on the other hand, is more like a harmonious union. It's all about lighter atoms coming together to form a heavier one, releasing energy in the process. And the best part? The waste from fusion reactions is much, much less hazardous. Now, the real challenge of fusion propulsion is handling this hot magnetic plasma we're talking millions of degrees. Yeah, you heard me right, millions. That's hotter than the core of the sun. By using powerful magnetic fields, we can create a sort of invisible bottle to hold the plasma. It's like having a ghost jar that you can't touch, see, or feel, but it's there, doing its job of keeping all that blazing hot plasma in check. Let's talk about their main star, the Direct Fusion Drive or DFD for short. The DFD isn't your ordinary rocket engine. This beauty is a fusion-powered propulsion system designed to change the rules of the game. And it operates on principles that sound straight out of a Star Trek episode. Here's the scoop. The DFD uses a specific type of fusion called a neutronic fusion, a process that combines light atomic nuclei to produce a heavier nucleus, resulting in a colossal amount of energy in the process. But here's the catch. A neutronic fusion is neutron-free, meaning it doesn't produce the harmful high-energy neutrons typically associated with nuclear reactions. In the direct fusion drive, a cloud of superheated plasma is confined by a magnetic field. The plasma contains isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium, and helium-3 that fuse under extreme temperatures. The fusion reaction creates an incredibly hot, charged exhaust that is expelled to provide thrust. And voila, we have propulsion. But that's not all. The fusion reaction also generates direct electrical power, which can be used for various spacecraft systems. All right, let's talk performance. You know those stats that make gearheads go gaga? In this corner, we've got traditional rocket engines like SpaceX's Raptor vacuum variant, quite the heavyweight in the world of rocket science. But how does it stack up against our contender, fusion engines? Let's just say if rockets were cars, traditional engines are like your sturdy, reliable family sedan. And fusion engines are the eye-popping, jaw-dropping, supercharged sports cars of the space world. These fusion rockets could be so efficient they make our current tech look like it's stuck in the slow lane. A trip to Mars with traditional tech? We're looking at roughly nine months.
about as long as it takes to make a human baby. But with a fusion rocket, pack light, because we're talking a matter of weeks. Saturn? That's a cool seven years with our current tech. Fusion engines could get us there in just two years. And let's not even get started on interstellar travel. But like any high-performance machine, fusion engines have their challenges. Remember that fiery dance of atoms we talked about earlier? Getting that dance started is tricky business. You see, atoms, they're not natural dancers. They resist coming together until they're moving at ultra-high speeds, which only happens at ultra-high temperatures. It's like trying to light a fire in the pouring rain. To build a viable fusion reactor, we have to create conditions as hot as the center of the sun right here on Earth. It's a monumental challenge, but if we can crack it, the cosmos will be our playground. We're now delving into the wild world of current research and development. There's a lot happening here, and it's about as thrilling as watching a comet streak across the night sky. Remember Lawrence Livermore National Lab? Those big brains in lab coats we've mentioned before? Well, they've hit a milestone that's been making waves in the fusion world. They've achieved something called fusion ignition. Think of it like starting that dance of atoms we were talking about, but this time, the dance keeps going, feeding on its own energy. It's like hitting the space lottery jackpot. Now, imagine being able to use that kind of breakthrough in a compact system for space propulsion. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, that's exactly what our friends at Pulsar Fusion are aiming to do. They're leveraging research from Lawrence Livermore to create their own fusion reactor, a pocket-sized sun, if you will. Pulsar Fusion isn't going at it alone, though. They've teamed up with Princeton Satellite Systems as they plan to use the impressive facilities at the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. It's a dream team scenario, folks. This is like having the Avengers of nuclear fusion on our side. So when can we expect to see this marvel of science in action? Pulsar Fusion has set their sights on a full rocket test in 2027. That's right, in just a few years, we could be witnessing the launch of a rocket powered by a sun made by humans. Okay, okay, we've been talking a lot about nuclear fusion, but let's not forget about our pals over at SpaceX. They've been kicking up dust, or rather rocket smoke, down in Boca Chica, Texas. They're testing their new launch system, a behemoth that's looking to change the way we reach the stars. SpaceX has transformed Boca Chica into a bustling hub of aerospace activity. Day by day, they're testing and tweaking, inching closer to their ambitious vision of interplanetary travel. And there's a shiny new kid on the block, the Deluge system. It's a water-based firefighting setup. This is designed to protect the launch pad and the rocket from intense heat during those fiery liftoffs. The idea is to throw a ton of water onto the pad just before and during ignition, reducing the heat and shock waves that could otherwise harm the rocket or the pad. And then there are the launch tower's arms. One is called the chopstick, which will literally catch the rocket boosters as they return from space. The other, often referred to as the Mechazilla arm, is designed to stabilize and stack the spacecraft for multi-part missions. With each test, each success, and yes, even each failure, we move closer to a future where trips to Mars aren't just the stuff of sci-fi novels, but a reality. Reality. SpaceX, Pulsar Fusion, they're all contributing to this era of unprecedented advancement. It's an exciting time to be alive, isn't it? Companies like Pulsar Fusion, SpaceX, and NASA, they're not just changing the game, they're completely reinventing it. And they're all doing it with one shared goal in mind, to expand our reach in the cosmos, to push our boundaries, and to answer that ancient question, what's out there. Not only that, but science is venturing into the realm of human hibernation for deep space voyages. We've delved deep into this fascinating subject in another video. After this, do make sure to check out our deep dive on human hibernation. It's an epic journey from biology to the cosmos, and you won't want to miss it. So, my fellow stargazers, stay tuned, keep watching the skies, keep questioning, keep dreaming.